Good morning, Pot Coins. Today is Sunday, 30 August 2015. We are currently on block 984618 of the Pot Chain. Here's what's been going on since last time. It's been an interesting two weeks in the world of Potcoin. Good thing I didn't do a show last week. If I had, I would have said, Potcoin is broken. The transition from proof of work to proof of stake did not go off without a hitch. The network basically stopped for a little over two days. The community was rightfully pissed that there was no open test net for the switch. If there had been, bugs probably would have been found and fixed sooner. A new wallet was put out last Sunday and it fixed the problem. Potcoin now shares a story with Jesus. It died on Friday and was resurrected on Sunday. Everyone that opened up the new wallet for the first couple of days staked their entire balance almost immediately. It took a few days for enough people to update their wallets before the block generation times started to gain some consistency. For the past few days, the block times have been fairly close to 40 seconds. The network seems stable so far. Check out how my donation address has staked already. As far as I know, the exchanges are still down for deposits and withdrawals, but you can buy and sell. Hopefully they'll be back up and running again soon. Shapeshift is also unavailable for Potcoin. I think they should be up and running quicker than the exchanges, maybe in the next few days. I excitedly tweeted that Potcoin survived last week. That was a little premature. Potcoin will have survived this transition once the exchanges are back up. But my irrational hopes of becoming rich from being an early adopter have been renewed. I still plan on holding pot coins till they reach one gram per coin. Early last year, I predicted that it would take three to five years, and I still think that pot coin is on track for the next one to three years. It's not going to be easy, and it's not going to happen on its own. Pot labs have been doing a fairly good job, and but they have had some stumbling points, even though they've recovered from them each time. And hopefully they've learned from some of their mistakes too. We the community need to get more involved and Pot Labs should openly encourage and accept help from community members. Now that the biggest short-term challenge is almost past us, let's look at the roadmap again. The POS switch was a little over two months late. I don't know about the strain development since I haven't heard anything about it in a while. The pot cards are back. The pot coin shop launched, but the only thing in there are the pot cards. The mass marketing campaign didn't happen this month, and probably for the best, uh, since it would probably cause more harm than good to advertise before the POS switch was stable. And the Android and iPhone apps have been delayed too. So, coming to the end of this map, they were about halfway successful. A new roadmap with new goals is supposed to be coming out on the 1st of September. Russia hates pot. Not the people that live in that geographic region, just the government that claims to own those people. They hate pot so much that they banned and blocked Reddit and Wikipedia just because there were articles and discussions about pot. They came to agreements with Reddit and now only certain threads are banned. The Wikipedia ban was even shorter, only lasting a few hours after an immediate outcry from the international community. Wikipedia refused to remove the article, but they did edit it. I tried to look it up, but this only applies to the Russian language Wikipedia, and I didn't have time this week to learn Russian. The Oregon Court of Appeals ruled that the smell of pot is not offensive, and no one has the right to be offended by the smell of people smoking it. And by right, I mean grounds for illegal recourse. This all started when the city of Pendleton wanted to fine people $500 for any offensive pot smell that floated to another property. If it had passed, it would have opened up the door to so much insanity. A letter to the editor of the, or of the East Oregonian pointed this out, calling for fining smelly farts too. Upon examining the logistics of fining smells, the Court of Appeals decided the odor of burning cannabis does not actually smell that unpleasant after all. They were quoted as saying, 
We are not prepared to declare that the odor of marijuana smoke is equivalent to the odor of garbage. Indeed, some people undoubtedly find the scent pleasing. I second that. I find the scent very pleasing. The block size debate continues. There are now two block size increase options that are leading the polls. BIP 100 and BIP 101. There are other options too, but 100 and 101 are currently the most popular. BIP, one, BIP 100 is currently supported by most of the mining pools. F2 Pool, BTC China, Bitfury, KNC Miner, 21 Inc, and several, several smaller pools. It would create a system where the block limits would be voted on and adjust every 12,000 blocks or about every three months. BIP 101 is supported by major Bitcoin companies. That list includes BitPay, Blockchain, Circle, BitNet, ItBit, and KNC Miner. Yes, KNC Miner was reported as supporting both. I don't know if the mining pool supports 100 and the hardware manufacturer supports 101, or if it's just a mistake in reporting. BIP 101 would increase the block size to 8 megabytes, and the cap would double every two years for 20 years. There are adv advantages and disadvantages to both options, and the Bitcoin community is split fairly even on the two. The miners have more say in the matter than anyone, since they'll be the ones implementing the change. As of right now, BIP 100 seems more likely even if 101 ends up with more supporters. Whichever one wins, it would go into effect in January of next year. That's it for this edition of Mad Pot Coins. Smoke them if you got them.